And I can't. Here we go. I'm ready. Cheers, man. Well, it looks like we've got seven on the panel. Let's have a look. I think that we are now live and then we can start. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name's um, Bruce Muirhead. Um, I'm hosting the panel uh, Developing Digital Prowess. Um, we're one of a numerous panels across the Harassus um, general meeting, uh, and we're looking forward to engaging with two, three, four of our um, panellists, um, awaiting the arrival of just one or two others that we thought would get going. Um, I'm sitting... Uh, on the eastern coast of Australia in a small town called Pomona. So I'm hoping my internet works. I'm currently on leave, but in, have been a very faithful participant and supporter of the Harassus community. Um, there's never been a more important time, I believe, for our collective intelligence on various issues than right now. Um, I believe Harassus exemplifies, in my mind, the connections of um, great minds and those minds who we just haven't been able to harness typically in events like this to contribute to problem solving. Um, my background is involved in that same platform of collective intelligence and building platforms to achieve those goals. So I'm looking forward to today's discussions about how we can in this period of COVID connect businesses, um, partner up with counter ups, um, counterparts, I'm sorry, um, in the developing work to raise our abilities and our collective abilities. And what's some of the ideas where we need to accomplish to, to um, open up these opportunities? Uh, we, from a personal perspective, we believe the next year or two are really critical for establishing strategic partnerships as much as raising money and generating revenue as a startup. Um, but we're seeing it particularly in Australia, a keen trend to look at the uh, alignment of Australian companies on particular issues, whether that be uh, the tracing of COVID or the trend right now towards the uh, how do we recover from the COVID, um, uh, 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 the impact of COVID. In particular, this panel has an interest in science, tech, engineering and math and those skills um, that we're looking at um, how we can, uh, I guess, enhance those in terms of the delivery of political, social and commercial knowledge. Um, how we'll run this panel today is we'll just be introducing each speaker. Uh, at this stage, I'm going to be asking each speaker just to take a minute to introduce themselves. Um, uh, so all of the panellists will just say a few words about who they are um, uh, and then I'll be asking a, a set of questions for some panellists. I know one or two of our panellists have something that they'd like to speak to um, in particular, and we'll just be talking to that topic. So we've opened it up that each panellist has the freedom to present as they like, and then we'll round off the panel with um, a set of questions both within the panel to each other and also open it to the floor. So for those of you who've joined us, um, thanks for joining this panel. Um, and we hope over the next uh, 40 or so minutes we'll be able to uh, extend our own thinking. Um, I'm a huge believer in being abundant in our thinking, um, and I believe that the panel we have today is a collective of global think thought leaders, um, and, uh, and we should achieve something good as an outcome. I believe that the outcome of the panels will be... Um, shifted into a report that Frank um, and his team prepare. And so we'll be able to look at that as well as I believe we're being, we're currently um, live and being filmed. So we'll be able to uh, undertake that. I will have some background noise with me at the moment because I'm actually in a distillery in Pomona, as I said, um, and it's four o'clock in the afternoon, a beautiful day here in Australia. Um, so we've got... Uh, Joel Bermisso, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of uh, Shalvi Tech. 
Um, Joel's going to be speaking to us at, at, to lead the way, just with a few minutes speaking um, to particular work he's doing, uh, and linking that with the the idea and the and the uh, and the uh, work towards developing digital prowess. Um, Joel, could I ask you whether you'd like just to take a few minutes now to introduce yourself and also your current thinking, potentially some of the trends you're seeing and and uh, and particularly some of the futures that you see and how we may achieve that, how we get there. So, welcome to Joel. And we'll get you just to unlock your the mute. your mute button, Joel. Hello. That's great. Okay. Good. Good morning, all. So, excuse me for my pronunciation. Um, I start. You'll okay. you'll be starting, Joel. Your first okay. speaker. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good morning, all. It's a real pleasure, a pleasure to participate in the Oralist World Conference with excellent panelists. Thank you to Frank to give him, for giving me the opportunity to express myself on a step that, that is very important to me and my continent. Uh, so excuse me for my pronunciation and the mistake because I don't speak very well English because I'm French speaking. Yes. So, uh, my opinion on the subject is broad because the, the, the uh, arrival of uh, the coronavirus has had a negative impact on all sector in Africa. So uh, the coronavirus has shown the dysfunctionment of African system and the importance of uh, technology. Today, the technology is the major solution to live and involve with uh coronavirus um, on the political technology has made it possible for government to interact with the people with, without contacts and reach a large uh Party. It also made it possible to pass the message of barrier measure even to the population of a village. On the social level, the social network has um, interact people to stay with the parents despite the distance. In the educational level, uh, the people practice the video conferencing. Uh, the uh, the school um, teach the uh, the lesson with uh, video uh, video conference on the professional level. The technology has made it possible to work and keep peace with teleworking. So uh, we not many uh, shortcoming in Africa system uh, because Africa have. Uh, Africa country ha have many problems. Absence of technology, uh, of technological infrastructure, absence of uh, internet connection. The country uh, African have many problems of connection. Yes. Uh, the country have not good connection, so it's very difficult to practice every time uh, uh, teleconference, tele, uh, teletravail, it, 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 it's a very, very big problems. Uh, and absence of comp co uh, computer training, absence for research center, uh, because uh, the, the many, many country African have not, uh, 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 have not a research center of informatic, of technology, the uh, the government uh, don't uh, don't finance the uh, the research center. So for me, the solution is uh, the creation of research center training in a digital tool in order to deploy it is in business sector uh, computer training 
from primary school to university because uh, uh, the computer training uh, is teach just university. So the arrival of uh, uh, coronavirus X. Uh, um, um, so. Uh, The people, uh, accept the change with the introduction of digital. Uh, for me, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my startup, which every time digital transformation, I, uh, I teach, I, I give any conseil, uh, for for enterprise you're doing well Joe okay um, I uh, so I write uh, two question my, my uh, for uh, for explain my opinion, okay? Uh, my first question, Charvitech is, uh, is in the digital transformation, why is the subject important to you? Uh, the, the subject is important because we, we use technology on a daily basis with advice for the migration of African company to digital through sales strategy and by being present of social net networking, networks. Yes. Uh, my two question: Have you supported business that reflect this topic? Yes, in it, we have supported company in the distribution and and, uh, and construction because when when is uh, when is a company of uh, distribution uh, you. Uh, Lost. It's very difficult for me. To just now, Joel, why don't we, Joel, take it. What we can do is we'll circle back um, because we've got to, we'll work through each person's thoughts. But you've done well and it's a brave thing to do. So, I'm, in terms of to get to where some of you are thinking, can we hold you there for a second, give you a breath, and we'll circle back in a, in a minute. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk through everybody because I think some of the points you're raising there, particularly around connectivity. And um, and even your your story about the uh, that you're starting to tell about your social your enterprise your um startup that will come the, back. The, uh, the solution for me. Yeah. Hello. Yes. So, did you Hello. want to just speak to your solution? Um, did you say that you? What, I, what I'm going to suggest, Hello. Joel, can, have you got me now? Can everyone hear me now, Silvano, Bernard? Yes, sure, 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 Bruce, I'm here. So, I, I, I yeah, uh, we lost probably the connection. So, if oh, you... So what we might do is we might shift quickly to you, Silvano, on the basis we're on a time, we're on a schedule, and we've got 30 minutes left in the panel, yeah. and I thought... Um, I'd like to uh, introduce Silvano Coletti. Um, Silvano is the founder and CEO of Chelonia. Is that how I pronounce it, Silvano? The, um, yeah, Chelonia. Chelonia is, uh, yeah, is, is the, the right pronouncing. So Chelonia is, uh, is, is a Latin word coming from the Tartos word. Right. Uh, yes, I'm the chief executive uh, of Chelonia, known as Chelonia Applied Science. Uh, uh, first of all, good morning to the world, because it seems that this is an, really an, ex, an extraordinary uh, meeting, but also an extraordinary exercise of, uh, of digital world. So when we ask about uh, why is important digital, I think that the answer is uh, in this uh, uncertainty period is right uh, the way that we are meeting each other. 
uh, you yeah. know, Raz, it uh, comes from a very different experience uh, in the past, and I'm following Raz's uh, at least since 15 years. Uh, and this is really the first time that we meet uh, virtually. And for that reason, I think is a, is a good exercise. By the way, so uh, by training, I'm a nuclear engineer. I joined uh, the executive education at Harvard Business School, and I was a fellow at uh, um, Ecole Polytechnique de Lausanne here in Switzerland, where I'm based. Kelonia is uh, headquartered uh, in, uh, is registered in Lugan in the south of Switzerland, but it's headquartered in Basel, so in the very north uh, of, of Switzerland. In my past, I have the, had the fortune to work with uh, it's a very important scientific team, and I can mention for sure that I was part of uh, the Nobel Prize uh, team Ilya Prigozhin in Brussels. Uh, Ilya worked in uh, thermodynamics of nonlinear system, and uh, I want to introduce this, uh, uh, not just to say about my CV, but because uh, the problem of thermodynamics of nonlinear systems uh, bring to the problem of complexity. That is uh, something that came up with uh, the topics that uh, we have to cover today in terms of STEM. So uh, this is a, a, a very hot topic when we talk about STEM. And um, yeah, so my professional credential uh, span over the past 25 years. Uh, um, I hope to, to, to cover some... Uh, uh, important topic for the community of Oasis, but also to bring to the attention of the community some project where Kelonia is working. And I think that this could be some showcase of the digital prowess. Um, so that's all. That's great, Savannah. And thanks for um, that contribution. We might, we'll circle back to talk about some of the, uh, pull apart the case study possibly as a way of a showcase. Um, I've got a few questions for you. Um, Kelona is a leading player in enabling use of scientific discovery. So the top research centres and large corporations collaborate with Kelona to bring breakthrough technologies and innovation to the market. So what about the importance of digital prowess and AI in your business model? Yeah, sure. So first of all, I think that I can start saying that... Um, uh, on to around the 40 museum and uh, an art Basel uh, uh, convention every year. Basel is famous for its vibrant art scene as well where we are based. But for the past 20, 150 years, uh, the country's third largest uh, city in Switzerland also has established uh, itself as an hotspot for chemical and pharma innovation. And uh, HIT hosted the headquarters of two of the largest uh, pharma corporations in the world. I mean, Novartis and Roche. And by the way, also Kelonia that is hosted inside uh, the innovation office of uh, University of Basel. So say that you understand that, of course, a great part of our business is focused on life sciences. Um, we work with the uh, University of Basel and with some of the largest uh, pharma corporation. And uh, we are developing many projects right based on uh, digital. We are embracing digital and data revolution in our value chain and in the value chain of our client. And you understand, and we can talk uh, later on more probably, uh, you understand that the complexity, for instance, of drug discovery and drug development, that is uh, uh, something we are working uh, on every day. Uh, you understand that how much is important the digital process and also the introduction of some technology like artificial intelligence or supercomputers that we are using today in some project like Escalate for Cloud. And so um, we believe that uh, the, the uh, how can I say, the mathematics, uh, computation, and of course uh, the digital revolution will be at the core of, uh, 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 of, of the next, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, business wave for the future. 
I couldn't agree more. In some ways, it, it's been framed as it's the digital revolution that was meant to come in 10 or 20 years, and it's here right now, isn't it? So what about the advantage of um, digital technologies in the pharma industry? Is there a distinct advantage in that regard? Yeah, so it, it, it's a very big advantage for the pharma. So I, I, I can bring to you the example of, uh, of some project we are working uh, on with digital and artificial intelligence. For instance, uh, I can uh, mention for, uh, for sure a project related to the microbiome. Probably many of you heard about microbiome that seems to be the next big thing for uh, uh, the investors and uh, for the technology and healthcare in the future. So based on artificial intelligence now, with some of our partners from pharma corporation, from pharma industry, we can uh, we can predict the um, um, the fact of some responding and non responding uh, patient to some therapies. So uh, I mean, so with the with the machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, and uh, the the digital technologies. We are in the uh, in the position today to um, uh, um, evaluate and correlate uh, the big data from the public data set uh, and the omics uh, from the clinics of the patients in order to say if a patient uh, respond or no respond to a therapy. And so you understand that this is uh, fundamental in the personalized medicine. So the answer to uh, to your question is, of course, that it's, uh, I think, very clear the importance of digital world uh, in the pharma, in the pharma. And, um, and also, if you think about the complexity of medicine, every time that each of us take a medicine, a drug, and you have a, a solution to a disease, uh, uh, behind uh, the mechanism of action of the drug, there is a, a, com a, a very complex word that uh, will not work in the future without uh, the introduce introduction and embracing the digital technology in the value chain of the pharma industry. And I, you mentioned before that it's, it's, it's compelling, to be honest. Um, uh, Savannah, in terms of the pharma industry, and we, I guess, within Australia, and from my p local context, you can see that, particularly even within the CSL um, construct of R and D and innovation. Do you have a showcase? Um, you mentioned it before that you've got a showcase. Would you be open to sharing, and maybe around the Escalate um, Four? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Escalate. Uh, yeah, that'll escalate help give clarity. Forever. Yeah, Escalate for Cub is, uh, I think, is uh, a fantastic showcase that we can bring to the attention of, uh, of, uh, of the community. I cannot share the desk now, but you can find a very good website that is uh, Escalate for as number, Cub.eu. Uh, Escalate for Cub is a public private consortium supported by the European Commission Horizon 2020 program. Um, to counter the coronavirus pandemic and uh, improve the management uh, and care of patients. Uh, the, the Escalate for COVID consortium is composed today by Dompe Pharmaceutici, that is an Italian pharma corporation, and um, from other uh, 17 institutions, including uh, top research centers, uh, including Keloni Applied Science, uh, together with many other, for instance, Fraunhofer, uh, or some university, Karoliska in Sweden and some others. So, you know, uh, the, the, the showcase of Escalate, I think it's particularly important because bring to the attention of the community, the introduction of artificial intelligence and, um, supercomputers for fight, uh, fighting, uh, uh, the pandemics, so the coronavirus. The coronavirus disease uh, has become an important uh, public issue across uh, the globe since December 19 uh, last year. So as of the 20th of September of this year, so 2020, you know, more than 31 million people around the world uh, 
have been reported coronavirus in 210 countries. So it affects people worldwide and there is uh, no vaccine yet for the new coronavirus, uh, which is considered um, uh, uh, available for the population. Uh, so there is uh, an urgent need uh, to develop a potent anti-COVID-19 agent for the prevention of the outbreak and stop viral infection. And for that reason, the 18 members of uh, Escalate for Cobb, supported by the European uh, Commission, are aiming to leverage the European best computing resources and artificial intelligence, uh, coupling them with some of the continent best life sciences uh, research lab. At the core of the project, there is uh, Escalate. Escalate is the acronym of uh, Exascale Smart Platform Against Pathogens and is at the present uh, the most powerful and cost efficient intelligent supercomputing platform in the world. So, um, you, so just to give you a number, so with artificial intelligence and with uh, the supercomputer, we are screening today 500 billion molecules uh, in few hours, something that generally you can do in month, if not in years. And, uh, and you know, so this is basically the big advantage of the digital in many, many industries and many uh, value chain. I, I, I think that we lost uh, Bruce, uh, um, uh, it, will, it will probably come back, but uh, maybe that, uh, uh, so if, if I take uh, <laughs> the word of Bruce uh, uh, as moderator, but I think it's coming back, but uh, maybe that I can, I can give the, the, the microphone to Bernard to introduce yourself. In the meanwhile, uh, Bruce will come back. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hi, I'm uh, Bernard Moon. Oh, Bruce is back. So uh, uh, yeah. So so yeah. Silvano just ended, and then now I'm just doing an introduction of myself, Bruce. So I'm. Uh, oh, I'm okay. Ben. Lost. Um... Yeah, no worries. Uh, I'm Bernard Moon. I'm a co-founder and partner at Spark Labs Group. We're a network of startup accelerators and venture capital funds across the globe. Uh, over the past seven years uh, since our founding, we have invested in over 280 startups across six continents. Um, our stronghold and most active region is Asia, followed by the US. Um, but uh, like I stated, we have invested uh, across the globe, so. Um, thanks for taking and um, uh, portfolio that you speak to, but questions to get the ball rolling. Venture capital, a topic important to you. Um, well, we think this topic is very important just because obviously as investors, it's all about um, talent and finding the right, uh, Bruce dropped off again. So um, it, it's all about finding uh, the right talent and founders. And we've seen obviously over the past uh, decade that the earth is definitely become, becoming flatter and also knowledge is definitely more easily shared. So uh, if you look at one, one uh, metric, the number of tech unicorns has been more evenly distributed across the globe. From over a decade ago, it was only a handful of, com of countries that produce unicorns. And now it's, I think, um, over a couple dozen. And I think this trend will continue as STEM education uh, improves across all nations as training spreads and training means not just in the at educational institutions but also obviously in the corporate world 
And this will create a more equalization of competition uh, on the innovation front, where obviously the U.S. currently leads, uh, probably followed by uh, certain Asian countries as China. Uh, but we definitely, as a firm, believe that the next uh, Mark Zuckerberg will be outside of the U.S. So, You do? Yep. Okay. And so in terms of, have you invested in any companies that reflect the topic we're discussing? Or? Yeah, we have. I mean, uh, one, of the one of the companies we invested in is Andela. So they are based in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, and New York City. And their thesis, uh, we invested at their seed stage out of our U.S. seed fund, and um, their thesis was that the top 1% of software developers can be produced anywhere in the world. And all yeah. we have to do is test and train for them. And that's what they did. They started in Nigeria and uh, they developed and trained and they've basically created an outsource uh, firm that caters to the top Fortune 500 uh, companies across the globe. Um, they, we invested in the seed round. Uh, they were actually, since we mentioned Mark Zuckerberg, they were actually the first investment by Mark Zuckerberg's family office. Uh, they led their Series B. And then recently, uh, a little over a year ago, uh, Al Gore's firm, Generation Capital, led their uh, $100 million Series D. So it's definitely on a good track and pace. So. It certainly sounds it. Um, and it's a principle that would make, from a productivity point of view, makes sense. So let's, let's if we get a minute, it might be, a, I'm sure we'll have some questions from those who are um, participating, particularly when it comes down to something which is almost so, it's a crystal clear example. So thanks for that, um, on, on that one, Bernard. Um, Kishav, I'm glad to see you and, and, uh, and welcome you. Um, for those who've joined the panel, Kashab is the group CEO of WNS Global Services. He's past chairman of NASCOM and member of the Wall Street Journal CEO Council. Um, on the basis of time, Kashab, I might just jump straight into it with you. Um, how is um, we, WNS enabling its clients to build digital strategy at the moment? Thanks a lot. And uh, it's really wonderful to be here. Though I must say, this is such an intimate conversation. It's five of us and five other attendees. So it's just 10 of us. So at the end of this, I just hope the five of us are in close touch along with the others. And let's see what <laughs> we can do uh, to grow uh, you know, our own interactions and business from here. I uh, must mention that uh, WNS is a company that actually has about 43,000 employees across the world. I run the company from Mumbai. We operate in 16 countries, 61 development centers. When I came in, the market cap was 400 million. We're now swinging between 3.2 and three and a half billion dollars. And digital first and technology intensive models as well as great talent and people is what actually drives uh, you know, the, the success of this company. We work across a number of core verticals, including insurance, healthcare, retail, pharma, and probably many of the top brands that you interact with across the globe are actually being serviced by one of my colleagues across uh, from one of our centers across the world. In terms of digital, you know, uh, I just want to take you back to October the 4th, 1957, when uh, the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik 1, and that actually started off the whole, uh, you know, uh, the space race, so to speak. I think with COVID-19, what has uh, now being created is a Sputnik moment that will drive digital acceleration at a pace that has never been seen before. And, uh, you know, fast forwarding in terms of where WNS itself is, you know, we are focused on models where digital first has become digital only models. That's the first. The second is building digital skills and capabilities will now give way to building modern you know, business models involving digital, but more importantly, integrated into the overall you know, scheme of things with uh, hands-free ways of operations. And it is not just about 
assembling technology components, but it's all about aligning strategy and human-centered design thinking. So even when COVID-19 hit us in February, I must tell you, uh, I operate from Bombay. And as you said, I, I also chair the Indian IT fraternity I, at that point in time, I chaired it. So uh, we have four and a half million people who work in this industry. And I took charge of actually helping to move three and a half million desktops in India alone to people's homes. And a BCP model that had never been tested before in a week or 10 days became what I call a PCP model driven completely by technology, digital models, and you know, people working from homes and having the lights on for global companies across. So at WNS, we started with what we call a hyper surge model where we brought all our digital assets together to keep the lights on during COVID. And today, we are now saying that this is not something that will disappear overnight. And therefore, we will help you with your digital strategies and hyper lead in terms of accepting this as a new model while the vaccine is likely to be available. And then over the next year, year and a half, help them lead uh, in terms of their, you know, their uh, aspirations. And finally, you know, I must say as the chairman, as a former chairman of NASCOM, one of the things that we have done at an India level is that we have understood based on how well India um, and a few other countries actually managed the crisis from a technology point of view. We are investing significantly in what we call our future skills models, where we have chosen certain technology areas. We have created the platforms. We have created MOOCs. And we are making sure that first and foremost, the four and a half million people who already are part of the tech industry are being reskilled in terms of new technology areas of the future. And we are tying up with universities across the whole of India to make sure that new technologies and new curriculum is now being thought through and dispensed uh, in order to make sure that we get better quality people, more numbers, and India will you know, be the digital superpower of the world. So just to end, I will say that you know, when we coined a phrase last year at NASCOM, we said, and in fact, the Prime Minister of India spoke a lot about it. He said, when the world thinks digital, the world will think of India. And that's how we're doing it. And that's how you're doing it. I had one more question, just if you could take a minute on it, which is how can we ensure that high STEM literacy? Um, so we've got just six, we've just got five minutes left on this panel. So if, if we can, um, if you could just capture it in Keshav in a, in a minute or two, how do you think we can ensure high STEM literacy? It's the core of the topic today. So. Sure. And I think, you know, I'll just, uh, you know, once again, underline some of the things I said earlier. I think that's the model. We, in order to push the STEM model, we have to very clearly understand that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics have to be now integrated into creating life solutions and business solutions for people and not just being used as a fashionable uh, topic to discuss. So what we're doing is, you know, making sure that it's actually getting ingrained into the fabric uh, at curriculum levels at the university levels. Simply put, for example, even uh, during, uh, you know, COVID-19 itself, how are we leveraging, you know, the integration of science, technology, engineering and math even from a point of view of creating new PP equipment, creating new masks, things like that. I think that is what needs to get integrated into each and every business environment. And finally, I'll say that business 4.0 of the future based on COVID-19 and any future pandemic will be all about, you know, understanding technology, but also understanding the social impacts and ensuring that we come up with solutions that are, you know, that are, uh, interesting and useful for the world at large. Thanks. And, and the Israel model works extremely well in terms of the integration. Thanks, Kisha. Um, we've got a we've got our call down now from three minutes. So the best way I think we can spend this. I've asked whilst everyone's been talking. I've just asked those who are participating as uh, within the community within the um, uh, uh, session today if they'd like to ask a question. One person's asked a question, Annette Niz, who's um, uh, asked whether at the end we can do a group selfie. So I think there's a button here which allows us to do that. So we'll do that one, Annette, at the end of it. Um, but I just want one of the most important things that I think 
is is um we're, we're bringing shared wisdom at Harassus the the idea is to bring shared wisdom to the plate in my company we always at our board meetings have a red flag or what's you know what's what's the issue that we really need to be focusing on right now on earth in this particular area where can where's the biggest risk we face i'm going to ask all the panelists just to wrapping up it'll be 30 seconds each starting now for panelists but what's the biggest risk right now i know joel you talked about africa but i'm talking about globally um and particularly on our topic area what is it that we can't we have to keep an eye on so silvana did you want to go first yeah sure so i think that uh, in this Yes. Yep. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm saying that uh, I think that the major risk in adopting the digital technologies and this digital process, uh, from my point of view and from experiences that we have, is uh, the um, uh, the availability of the human resources. So I yep. mean, the T-shaped the people. Uh, with skill and talent uh, in computational science, at least uh, from our side as uh, Kelonia Applied Science, uh, and uh, the people with the skill in STEM, as as we are talking about today, I think it's a problem. So that's, okay, uh, that's one perfect. of the major risks. So the education. Yep. Yeah, Let's, that, let's flip it to Bernard, who's actually talked about a new model, which is you can train, like, it's an interesting flick to you, Bernard, because you, you're backing a group that's saying you can actually train certain skills here anywhere. Uh, you know. So did you want to speak to your, your feeling? What's the big red flag we've got to keep an eye on here? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think it's always still a holistic approach on the educational front, not to start, not to, you know, diverge from the focus on STEM. Right, but I, I think it's always a balance in terms of education and development to yep. obviously focus on you know STEM as one of the cores, right? But then also have a, a broad sort of approach in terms of education, right? Especially as the world becomes way more complex, right? Every every several years, right? To tackle problems, right? So it's not um, you, you know you just don't have a narrow view on things. So. Good call. And Joel and Kishav, we'll just wrap with you guys. Do you have a different opinion or would you back those as the red flag to watch? No. Joel? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Kishav, you, oh, hey, let's yeah, bring sure. it back. So let, me, let me quickly say that you know, I agree with that, but I think before that, the biggest risk for the world today really is how countries will leverage digital technologies to actually ensure that vaccine reaches people across the world. Uh, India, for example, uh, does not have a model yet to deliver 1.2 billion vaccines. Uh, the U.S. delivers 160 million flu vaccines every year. So the, the system is geared for it. Many countries do not have that in place. So we first need to get that done. And the second is, with all of us working from home, I think cyber security is a big, big risk. That we all have to keep a close watch on Good call. And Joel, to wrap it, and then I think we'll wrap with a group selfie. I found the button. Okay, thank you for all. Uh, for me, the technology is the future. The, the future because when you are, when uh, when they are, uh, uh, when what it is you under me or all uh, uh, various the technology uh, give many solution to uh, to um, to to interact with uh, all people. Right. Well, great way to end. Can I just thank all panellists? Uh, I very much wish we could be going and having a drink afterwards in a networking session to meet each other and, um, and uh, learn more about what each other's doing. In the limited time we've had together, it's been inspiring to know that these sort of, uh, we're pushing boundaries collectively. Take that out to across 800 speakers in Harasses and it's incredibly impressive the people who are sitting around the tables. I'll personally be in contact, um, hopefully over the coming weeks and months with you all. Um, I hope with this bonds us so I can see if um, we continue using Run the World, you can follow different people and so forth. If everyone's happy as a panelist, are you happy to try what a virtual group, group fi means, a group fi? So I guess you look at the screen and take a photo. 
No, Mo, do you want to take, do, just, do you see, take a selfie? Oh. That's, oh, so I see what we're doing. So we're all adding our groups. Everyone's taken one? Oh, I see what it's doing. So it's going to, it's going to bond us together in a group photo. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> all right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks very much, and I very much appreciate okay. it. Thank you all. Look forward to meeting all of you at the school in person. All the very best. Stay safe. Oh, and the thank same. you. Bye. Bye. See you, Bernard. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye